Hello and welcome. If you are watching this, then you probably found this video through the VR chat optimization uh, documentation. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at this avatar throughout the optimization uh, videos. In particular, this one is going to be for dynamic bones optimization. So we're going to be using this model, which I purchased off of uh, booth.pm, and we're going to take a look at it and see where we can get some easy wins for optimization. Uh, using tools that are available for free and from the community that have been created by the community. Some basic techniques to recognize uh, issues before you ever get it into VRChat. So if you're familiar with optimization processes, you probably already see a couple of problems, but we're going to focus just on the armature and particularly the dynamic bones. Now, I went ahead and I've already attached a dynamic bone script to this uh, and assigned some bones to it. Um, so if we go in and we select this avatar, we can see that the hair moves around a bit. Uh, and you can see the dynamic bone armature kind of built into it. But there's kind of a problem here. I've counted in here that there are 37 dynamic bones, and that doesn't even count if you want to do anything with this long ribbon here or the tail. So we need to reduce the amount of bones that we're affecting here. Dynamic bones is extremely expensive. Um, I would recommend that you try and stick under, I'd say, 30 affected transforms and try and go as low as you possibly can. Now what I mean by affected transforms is not the number of scripts, it is actually the number of objects it's affecting, including all of the children of those objects. So I have the script here on the head here, and what you can see is that there are two exclusions included, which I'll get to in a moment. The dynamic bone script is affecting all of these bones here and all of their children. So if we look there, we can see that there's even more bones there, and if we look there, there's even more bones and so on and so forth. So we don't want to have that many bones in there. In addition, if we had colliders on the hands, that would make it even worse. Uh, dynamic bone calculations are already pretty expensive. Colliders make them even worse. Dynamic bones by far is probably one of the, I, I would say it is the most performance hungry or, or CPU cycles hungry thing that you could possibly put on your avatar in VR chat. More so than fancy shaders, more so than having unjoined meshes, uh, which is bad in its own right, more so than, well, multiple materials, that kind of thing. It is very, very bad. So let's try and reduce that. You may want to still have dynamic bones because it's kind of cool to have your hair flowing around or like a tail moving or other objects that may be hanging off of your avatar in a different case. So let's go ahead and switch over to Blender and we'll take a look at what we can possibly do here. So we have brought the model from Unity back into Blender. We are using Blender 2.79 and this is Cat's Blender tools on the side here. Cat's Blender plugin rather is a open source licensed under MIT add-on for Blender. Uh, it also incorporates Shutteria's uh, plugin, which I believe is also MIT licensed. You can see those downloads in either the documentation that you probably found this video at or in the description of this video. But they're very useful tools. They are created by VRChat community for the VRChat community, and it helps make a lot of this uh, significantly easier. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the bone structure. And this is the head bone. This is where all of this hair is parented. You can see the individual hair bones here. Let's go ahead and see how many children this head bone has. And first I'm going to turn on these screencast keys before I forget. Perfect. Now you can see what I'm doing. Down here you'll see the buttons as I push them. You can see them hitting tab to toggle edit mode. But here I'm going to hit shift G, which is going to allow me to select the children of the bone. And then I'm going to shift right click on the three bones I don't want to count. You can see up here that the number of bones is 37. Uh, that is the selected number of bones here. So we're we're blowing past the budget or the ideal budget of 30 just by having these hair bones here. So how do we fix this? There's two ways. There's a manual way and there's an automated-ish way. Uh, let's go ahead and try the automated-ish way first. Um, but before we do either way, let's reparent all of these bones. Easiest way to do this is with cats. So let's go ahead and it doesn't really matter what you select here. We're gonna go to bone parenting right here. We are going to select Kami 1, which is the name of these back, the hairs on the back of the head. So we are going to hit Parent Bones, which is going to create a new bone in the exact same position, rotation, and scale as the head. You can see it selected it right here. It's called Root Kami 1, and if we go into the armature itself, under hips, under spine, under chest, under neck, under head, we can now see that the hair is no longer as it was before, which I'll hit Control Z, I believe, which should let me, not sure it does not. Guess you can't back out of that. But we've got all the hair here, which was previously parented to the head. Let's go ahead and move all of these other bones to be a child of the root bone here. So we're just gonna shift click on these right here. Uh, not the parent just yet. 
Um, we don't want to select the eyes, obviously. Those need to be parented to the head. And we are going to then select the root bone, hit control P, and then say keep offset. And this is going to make the parent, so as you can see, or the parent of all of these children, the root bone. This makes things a lot easier for assigning the dynamic bone script. We no longer have to have the exclusions, and it just looks a little bit more organized in general. So now what we can do is we can reduce these bone chains. So let's start with the automated method, which will work with some of these bones, but not all of them. First off, let's go to optimization and let's go to bone merging. Let's again select the Mimi bones here, which you can see from the prefix that, or I'm sorry, not Mimi, we're gonna go to uh, Kami, because there are more bones uh, or more bone chains available. The number of bones it's listing here, eight bones, two bones, four bones, three bones, is actually the number of chains. A chain is exactly what you might think it is. It is a chain of bones starting with one leading down to some number of other bones. In this particular case, we are gonna choose Kami because it is the largest amount and we'll do these automatically. So we have three bones in each chain. Uh, so we want to actually merge with a ratio of 33 or 50 is actually fine. Um, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to reduce these bones down to just a bone chain length of one that acts oddly with the dynamic bone script. We want to have a minimum of two in each chain. So we've got a limited amount of merging that we can do before things start getting a little weird. Let's go ahead and keep it at 50 in this particular case. If you had four, 50% would still work. But if you had six, for instance, and you wanted to merge it down to two, then you would want one third of that, in which case you would need to drop this down to 33%. But here, 50 is perfectly fine. So let's hit merge bones and watch all of these hairs back here. And you can see now that they are all two bones. It has removed the middle bone in each one of them and merged in the weights for the bones that were removed into their parents. So if we go to pose mode here and select, say, this particular bone chain, you can see that the hair moves in total. Uh, the, the weights from the deleted bone were merged up into the parent bone. So cool, that is the automatic method. Now you can see that there are some bones here that didn't work with the automatic method, uh, either because it is a lone bone chain, like in the case of this side ponytail here, or with the ears, which actually we're not gonna touch because they're already two bones, uh, or with these front little bits of uh, hair chains here. So we'll do it manually. Pretty easy, again, with cats. Uh, we are going to just click on the bottom most bone in the chain, we're gonna click this merge weights button under the model options section. What that does is the exact same thing that the automatic method does, except it does it manually, where it merges the weight of the bone that you have selected up into its parent and then deletes the bone that you have selected. So we're gonna do that again uh, here in the front. Full tip, you can actually shift right click to select multiples and then hit merge weights and they'll merge up into the respective parents. So now let's go ahead and select the root kami one here hit, uh, I believe it's shift G, it sure is, and then select the children, and then deselect the center bone, if I can click correctly. There we go, that's what I wanna do. Now we just have these bones selected, we can see that we are down to 26 from 37, which is pretty good. Um, you can also use some more advanced techniques that I encourage you to dig into to reduce these bone counts even further. Um, what you could do is you could merge these strands into one strand because when you have dynamic bones running, you can typically assume that like all of this hair is gonna move as one object. This does remove a little bit of fidelity, but you're not really gonna notice in normal usage. Same thing for example, maybe this front hair could just be one bone. They're not really gonna move independently. The forces acting on them are going to be the same in most situations. So if you have it merged to one bone or two bones rather that are in the center here that kind of wiggle back and forth you could do that but those are a little bit more advanced techniques they're actually not that difficult so if you want to experiment and try things out then it works out uh, just make sure that you're testing stuff with pose mode so anyways we've got this decently reduced um, the only other thing actually now let's do one more thing there's this tail here which is four bones the ribbons on the side are already two bones so that's as low as we want to go so let's go ahead and merge these down manually I believe if you hit merge weights in the middle of a chain, it fixes parenting properly. So let's find out. It sure does. We can see that this bone is still parented to this one. We're going to do it here as well. Merge weights. And we now have the tail with just two bones here. So if you want to stick dynamic bones on there, we can use that. Again, you can do this manually without cats. Uh, it involves editing the vertex uh, groups here. You can see that they're, each of the vertex groups are labeled. Um, you can do it by merging vertex groups or by renaming or deleting vertex groups. That is another way to do it. But again, it is strongly encouraged to use these tools here to make it easier. Making things easy to optimize your, your avatars are the key here to make sure that you can get everything working and back into VRChat as soon as you can. So anyways, let's move back to Unity. I'll export this over to Unity and I will see you in a second.
So we are back in Unity and we have the model imported and I have added dynamic bones not only to the hair here but I've also added it to the tail because we've got an additional budget. I believe this brings our total dynamic bone count on this model to 29 with adding in the tail. Uh, if we had this here 37 plus 4 for the tail we would be well over budget either way. Um, so this here is reasonably within the budget if you're if you're assuming that 30 is the absolute max that you have So let's go ahead and compare and see how they move Lapse those two. Let's move this one around You can see that that moves pretty well um, Like you get the little movement in the hair and then if you go here you can see with the exact same settings It moves pretty much identically uh, The movement stops a little bit earlier because of the particle simulation going on we move them next to each other side by side. You can see they're pretty close. Uh, and also you can see that because we have that additional budget, we can now move this one around and we have a little bit of tail movement as well. And you can tweak the settings and stuff for that to work a little bit better. But either way, um, that is how to reduce dynamic bones uh, on a particular model. Uh, keep in mind that the best way to reduce dynamic bones is simply not to use them. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you don't really need to have dynamic bones off of, uh, like, say, skirts and things uh, like that. There's not, like, if this entire skirt had bones in it, I've seen models with hundreds of bones through an entire skirt with bone chains eight long and 26 different bones, uh, bone chains. There's, there's just not a good way to reduce those uh, and keep the same fidelity, so do the best that you can there. But either way, that is pretty much it uh, for dynamic bones in particular. So, we'll talk about colliders next. So colliders are pretty straightforward, uh, at least in execution. What they do is that when you have a collider selected and you have it set up and you have it assigned as a collider here, it will allow you to interact with those bones, uh, moving them around. Uh, and we can kind of uh, attempt to do that here. Let's see how bad this messes up. Um, pretty badly, but you can see that when we touch the bones here, um, they move around as expected with a collider. But the problem is, is that doing that collider calculation basically doubles the cost of each dynamic bone because every time that the computer has to calculate the position of the dynamic bone and its children, um, it then also has to calculate and ensure that it is not within the radius of one of these colliders. Now, as a rough guess, it maybe doubles the cost of these dynamic bones. So if you want a rough uh, estimate of how much a single collider is going to amplify uh, the effect of a dynamic bone on performance, uh, just double it. So we had, what, 29 here? So we would have uh, roughly the equivalent of 58 dynamic bones with the collider here. We do have two dynamic bone colliders here, so that would uh, double it again from the original amount, or rather it would be 300% of its original amount. Forgive me if my ma math is wrong, but what is that, 87? Yeah, it, it's colliders are, even though interesting and fun and maybe good to use uh, when you are using an avatar specifically set up for it and for use in maybe smaller groups, when you are in larger groups or if you're making an avatar to be used in a pedestal, I would strongly recommend against using dynamic bone colliders ever. Dynamic bone colliders are extremely expensive and make performance much worse just by having even one. So if you want to have an avatar that you're able to play around with, then you can make one for yourself. If you do have one that you want to put in your avatar world, for instance, I would strongly suggest labeling it and saying this is a avatar with dynamic bone colliders. Please only use this in you know smaller instances with smaller amounts of people just to help out with performance. Um, but that is pretty much it for dynamic bones as a whole. Thank you for watching. And do you have any interest? There are some other videos uh, down below in the documentation about things like merging materials, merging meshes, that kind of thing. Dynamic bones is probably one of the more in-depth of the uh, videos that we have here. So I apologize for the length, but that's pretty much it.